Good morning. It is so great to be here with you this morning and a privilege to bring the Word of God uh, to you this morning and to share. So I am going to be uh, carrying on with our Healthy Relationship Series number four. And did you see the video that we, we sent yesterday, um, the testimony of, of the healthy relationships and uh, the uh, Tobacco was sharing with me how much impact the relationship series has had for her. And so uh, I just was like, Tobeka, won't you share? And I really ask you, please do click on and, and do listen to, watch the, the material that we send out for you. We do take quite a lot of effort um, to put it together and it's to bless you, it's to encourage you. Um, it's for, to give you stuff to share with other people and your friends and to help you grow as well. And it's part of being a community. But we can send stuff, but we can't control you that you open it and look at it. So we're doing our side of our connection. You need to do your side of your connection. Amen? <laughs> so... I am going to be speaking healthy relationships number four, and uh, the the quote, as it were, that that is running with this uh, with this relationship series is from Danny Silk that says healthy relationships truly are the most valuable, meaningful, and satisfying of human experiences, and. And many people would be, they want to run after money, uh, get wealthy, etc. But if that, uh, if that impinges and impacts on your relationships, uh, people all over have testified how empty it is. People who are the wealthiest, who are most famous, etc. And they are so lonely, they are so desperate for meaning and value in their lives and and their relationships have been destroyed in the process and we're wanting to help you that that not be the case for you and we have many um, we have students here you're aspiring to be successful in your careers but I want to invite you to to say Lord help me to be successful in my relationships that um, that that is the most meaningful and valuable aspect of our lives. Um, and so if Ecclesiastes 4, verse 9 to 12, this is a scripture that is often used at weddings. And it speaks uh, about how two are better than one because they have a reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. And, um, and just before I, I read the rest of it, you can, you can keep reading it, but this is often used in the context of marriage. And of course it is in the context of marriage, and it speaks there, verse 11, if two lie together, they keep warm. Um, but how can one keep warm alone? And one of my, uh, I've, I've been thinking about it recently, especially as it's starting, it's autumn, it's starting to move towards winter, and remembering how um, when we got married, one of the things that I found was the biggest, oh wow, was just being able to sleep in, another, in a bed with another person, with my dearest beloved, um, to sleep with him, to snuggle with him, not, not any further, even just being close and being able to be warm together. And I think that's part of what verse 11 speaks about. And, and that can, you can cuddle up with your brother or your sister. Um, the, we've spoken about the four kinds of love will come there with family kind of love and the, the beauty of, of being able to to have connection. But this speaks here, Ecclesiastes speaks about the significance of relationships in all areas. Two are better than one. That within a business context, 
as a friendship. God has made us to be in connection, to be in relationship with other people, and not to be all on our own, alone. And uh, just, I want us to have that as, uh, as remembering that as our basis as we're going through um, what I'm going to share with you. Because our goal is to keep connection, to keep our relationships where we can be walking together. But the enemy, our, our enemy, he wants to separate us. He wants us to be isolated, to be alone. When we're isolated, that is when we can be taken out, when lies can build and grow in our, in, our, in our hearts and in our minds, that no one loves me, that I'm not cared for, that I, people, and it's, and it's so often the lies that impact our hearts the most are, are the ones that are to do with people um, in relationship because God has created us to walk in relationship. And so I want to give credit to Danny Silk. This, uh, the, the quote that I put, uh, put up earlier by Danny Silk, but quite a bit of what I'm sharing from is Danny Silk and, and his material. He, um, he does, he ministers a, a course that's called Keep Your Love On. And, and it, that title captures the thing of keeping the heart connections, keeping how we are relating with other people. And, and so three areas that he highlights that are really crucial to healthy relationships. I am I'm going to, uh, to aim to unpack for you a little bit today and really trusting that it will help you to go, oh, okay, this is empowering me in my relationships so that I can, I can walk better in my relationships. And so some core commitments for healthy relating are these. And as we walk in these, as we do these, as we commit to this, in our relationships, it creates a safe place where trust can be created. And it's when both people commit to these things, to pursue the goal of connection. And I'm going to unpack each of these, although I do admit that my, my main um, focus, my main emphasis is going to be pursuing the goal of connection and the other to walk into it. But pursuing the goal of connection, pursuing the fact that I am committed to being connected in relationship with someone, and that because of that commitment, it affects how I behave. It affects my attitude towards them because I value my relationship. I value relationship, I value them, and I believe that there is a purpose in us being in relationship. And this is, so pursue the goal of connection, to control myself. Please notice that I am putting there to control myself, okay? Not being in relationship gives you license to control the person you're in relationship with, to control them. But how many of our relationships are, fall into and become a thing of controlling them? And it can be, it can come through, I want to control them, and what I do what I can to get them to do what I need. And the Bible says that manipulation is as the sin of witchcraft. And 
we, when we are afraid, the third thing is cast out fear with love. When we are afraid, our first thing we want to do is to control, is to control the situation, to control the person, because we want to fix it, we want to be in control. But that is not trust. That is not enabling the other person to love you and to meet you. We'll get there in a moment. So the basis of being able to walk in these commitments, to do these commitments, is the love that God gave us. God loves us. And we've spoken in the last three weeks, maybe even this is the fourth week, I can't remember if Shark did it as well, the four kinds of love. And we, uh, we've, we unpacked that, uh, that in the Greek language, there are four different kinds of words that describe love. Whereas for us in the English language, we love our dog, we love coffee, and I love my husband. And, and hopefully we don't love coffee more than we love our husband. Okay? We don't love our dog more than we love our child. Although sometimes you may feel more love for your dog than you feel love for your child, who is pushing the boundaries and is not taking their part, their half of the connection in a very serious way. But our foundation, our way that we are able to love is because of agape love. And I want to remind you and, and just uh, that agape is the love that is the foundation. It's the pillar. It's the, it is the means by which we are able to have a friendship kind of love. Because agape is unconditional love. Agape is a love that doesn't love you if you love me back. Agape is not a love that is, if you treat me nice today, I'll love you. It is a love that loves unconditionally. And God loves us that way, and it enables us to love our friends, friendship kind of love, love our friends unconditionally. It enables us to love our family members unconditionally. I know we, we speak with students sometimes, young people, and, and they are here and they, and they wrestle with the tension of, of how do I lo show love to and, and ex love my family when, when quite often what they're getting is manipulation or or pain that they've had as they were growing up. And, and it's by this, it's the agape love, that you're able to do that. And it's, so it's the undergirding. So I want to go to what does it mean to pursue the goal of connection, or what does it look like a little bit? And this is, uh, this is what Danny, how Danny Silk describes it. He says, committing to pursue and protect your connection with someone means that you will be thinking about how your decisions will affect that person while making adjustments accordingly. This is what it looks like. Committing to pursue and protect your connection with someone means that you will be thinking about how your decisions will affect that person while making adjustments accordingly. This means that you will be managing yourself in a manager, manner that protects your connection. 
This is the ultimate expression of freedom. And that is what it means to be a powerful person. It's not, your freedom is not freedom to control someone else. Being a powerful person is not the most powerful person in the room or in the relationship is not the person who can shout the loudest or who can hit the hardest. That is not power. That is, that person is powerless because they are not controlling themselves. A pow power and freedom in our relationships is a freedom to be able to control myself and to have, make decisions that are going to be for the benefit of our relationship. And so that's one of the reasons why the goal of connection, there is safety, a, a, a relationship can be a safe place, it can be a beautiful place when both people are committing to pursue the goal of connection and pursue saying, I am going to control myself. I am going to be controlled and motivated by love and not by fear. And thinking and being aware of how do these dynamics, how am I operating within them? Pursuing the goal of connection. And so protecting my connection with someone means that I'm thinking about how my decisions will affect that person and making adjustments accordingly. Let me give you some, an example. And, and um, I, my love language is acts of service. My children are agreeing with that increasingly. In other words, I, to show you that I love you, I, I don't think, okay, I want to show Abigail that I love her, and so I am going to uh, make a meal for her, or um, fold her washing for her, whatever. I don't think consciously, but that is my default in doing, in, in how I operate around my family, is doing stuff for them. The converse is also true, that if I am wanting, I receive love by people doing things for me. <laughs> but my children's love languages are not acts of service. <laughs> they are um, words of affirmation, for example or physical touch. And so, I, when I'm wanting something done, I'm needing something done, and it, it, it happened like even now. Uh, Anne-Marie's coming, I want to get the, I want to show Anne-Marie love by making the house tidy, making her room nice, uh, you know, putting a chocolate on her bed, etc., etc. But I'm preparing a sermon. I am busy. I'm, I've got a lot on. And so I'm going to, my, to Abby, and I'm trusting she doesn't mind me using her as an example, and saying, Abs, would you be willing to help me? Would you be good to? Now, Abby's tired. She's had school. She's finished the term. She, the last thing that she is really wanting to do is do stuff, because that's not her primary zone. She would love me to be sitting there and telling her how amazing she is and well done for this and you did so great with that, with words of affirmation. But because Abby values my heart and because she loves me, even though she doesn't feel like it, even though it's not her first choice of what she would like to do. She has put aside, she puts aside what she wanted to do, what her thing, to 
get up to help me, to cover for me and to do the stuff because she values her, our connection. She values our side of the, of the heart relationship. So I just drew a picture of, of uh, uh, an illustration of the goal of connection. And these hearts, so I, I need to explain it a fair bit, I do realize. So the, the two hearts are my heart and the other person's heart. And I want you to see that in the white heart, so say the white heart is my heart, the white heart, I am responsible for the heart connection, the, the, my part of the connection. I am responsible for the connection from me to halfway, if you will, between me and Abigail. And Abigail is responsible for her half, the green heart, for her half of the heart connection. Now, I, I'm showing it as a distance thing. Obviously, it's not a distance thing. But I am responsible for my half, and she is responsible for her half. And I'm using that word responsible. Another word is responsibility. I have responsibility. What does responsibility mean? Another way of saying it is I am able to choose my response. I am responsible. I have the capacity to choose how I respond. Response, ability. I have the ability to respond. I, I, we often in our relationships react, but that is not usually very good. When we react, we often go into the other person's half of the relationship and we try and control them. We try and manipulate them to do. Now, if I am responsible for my side, let's say, then I am going to do, because I value my relationship with my daughter, I am going to think about how I speak to her. I'm going to think about what words I use for her. I'm going to think about what is the load on her plate and what are her expectations. Communication is so crucial in our heart connections and how we connect and how we communicate. And um, Apostle Jacques spoke about that in the first section. He spoke about communication. And if I am not communicating well, if I am not doing all of that, if I'm not considering her, this heart connection, and I'm not valuing and building the connection, then what do we do? The temptation and what can come is when someone gets scared. If Abby is like, she's afraid, she doesn't feel safe, maybe I shout at her, maybe I, I, she feels that I'm going to hit her if she doesn't do what I want her to do. What's going to happen to her heart? She's going to shrink back. She's not going to feel safe and our hearts get disconnected. And God, we want to pursue the goal of connection, to pursue where I value you. And so I am going to keep pursuing. Now, if she is valuing our connection and she is feeling not safe, or she is feeling pressured, it's her responsibility. Maybe I don't realize that she's not feeling that. It would be for her to communicate, Mom, I felt threatened when you lifted your hand like that, and I felt scared, 
and she's communicating. Now, I'm saying I have, I do not hit my children. I have never. I am giving it as an example because unfortunately, manipulation and anger and how we relate to those who are less powerful, less able to, to respond well, is often in physical way of, we will make you do it. And there are so many wives that are living in this space. And it is not love. That is not love. It is the relationship has gone to fear. And it could be manipulation, emotional, or etc. And so we shrink back. And a test of how well are you doing in your relationships. And this is child parent. It can be friends. It can be uh, in your marriage, in a marriage situation, guy, people going out, etc. Is how safe do you feel? And how well are you, are you pursuing the goal of connection? Or are you pursuing being at a safe distance from that person? Because that's not a healthy relationship if you are pursuing a safe distance from that person. We can be in relationship, but emotionally we can be over there. You can be over there. This is how far it goes. And obviously there are levels, as we've spoken before, of appropriate closeness and how well we get to, with, uh, how close we get to one another emotionally. So I'm not wanting to uh, to continue with that. I, uh, sorry, I just wanted to give another example of this. Um, is my parents, my mum and dad. I want to just say thank you to them because they pursue heart connection with me because they want to support me and value and communicate that support. And so they are investing into our heart connection when they come all the way from Howick and come and be here when I preach. And I value that so tremendously. They, it's much easier for them to go to their church in Howick and to be there and to not have to drive the distance and get up their extra time and etc. But it's because they value heart connection. And because it, and it communicates love to me so much. And because of their connection and their commitment, their investment into my relationship, their side of the relationship, I'm like, I'm there for them in so many ways, in so many spaces. If they need me, I'm there for them. Not because I must but because we have a heart connection, our heart connection is good because we are investing. We are taking care of our side of the heart connection, of, <clears throat> of how we connect. I want, to, uh, I, I want us to just apply this to our relationship with the Lord briefly. The Lord loves us. He longs for and He pursued the goal of connection with us. God wanted connection with us so much that he sent his son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but in order that the world might be saved through him. So, so many people don't want to connect with God because they're so afraid that he is condemning them, that he's going to condemn them and, and, and point fingers at them and judge them. And, and that is not who our God is. God loves us. He, yes, he judges sin and he wants to clean us of the sin. Why does he want to clean us of the sin? Because the sin 
separates and damages our heart connection with Him. And He is pursuing the goal of connection with you. He loves you. He wants to be connected with you. And as such, He, he has invested His heart. He has invested everything of Himself to connect with you. God's agape, unconditional love says over you, no matter who, what you do, I am going to pursue the goal of connection with you. He is pursuing you. He wants connection with you. He wants to come close to you and be affectionate with you, to have an intimacy of relationship with you. And, and so often we don't believe that, but he is pushing in. He's saying, I want to be with you. The reality is that God chose you. He chose us first. He loves you. He has done everything he can on his half of the connection, of the heart connection. If you just picture in your mind those two hearts that are together, he has done the, the whole part of his heart connection. But he doesn't force us. He doesn't push us. He doesn't control and manipulate us. He wants us to choose him and to love him in return. He wants us to say yes to his love. And his love empowers us, his agape, unconditional love, empowers us to be able to love him back, to love other people. And he longs for us to do that. He frees us to be at peace with ourselves. His love, that unconditional love, because He's loved us as He's loved us, because He accepts us just as I am, He accepts me unconditionally. Because He accepts me just as I am, and He says, it's okay for Nolene to be Nolene. She doesn't have to be like Klingi is now. She, he wants to enable her to be able to love more like himself. But he says, Nolene, I made you to be Nolene, to be a, the best expression of Nolene that you can be. And I am empowering you. I'm giving you the power to be able to do that. And... Um, and so he gives us the power, he accepts us unconditionally, and he says, I want you, come to me, let me love you, let me help you to have a deep heart connection with me. And the, the delight, the fellowship, the, the connection, the specialness is just so beautiful. And, and that is, he, he wants us to come. And if you'll think about people who are in love and how they want to spend time with one another the whole time, that is how God, he wants us to be in that kind of connection, um, sharing, a familial kind of, special kind of love. The Holy Spirit has a personality God has a personality. God, the God the Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit. They have a personality. And I just thought, let me put this up here because sometimes we think of God as up there. And how we relate to him, it's it doesn't impact him. But it does impact him. It does. He has a personality, he has a personal identity. We have relationship with God. We can, he feels. He's not only worthy of praise, but he's relatable. He feels. He has emotions. We can hurt 
the Holy Spirit. Uh, Ephesians 4 verse 30, don't bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. We can grieve him. We can make him feel sad. And so how do we respond when we know that our choices, how it makes him feel? Are we adjusting how we relate? How it affects his heart and our connection with him? And for us to think, how am I going to adjust myself in order to protect my connection with God? And it's our relationship, and, and someone spoke this um, to, to in, a, in a meeting I was in recently, and just said that so often in the church today, so often allows Christians to feel the leading of the Holy Spirit, but not to obey it. We don't hold one another to lordship. He is Lord and to obeying and walking in it. And the Bible says, um, Jesus said in John 5, uh, 5, verse, 5 verse 15, if you love me, you will obey me. And it's not a heavy-handed, hard kind of love, uh, of, of obedience, like you will love me and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bash you over if you don't. It's not that. It's do you value your heart connection with me? It hurts me when I say something to you I encourage you to do something and then you don't do it. It hurts the Holy Spirit. And the reality is the person it's hurting most is me because I'm not listening to him and he's telling me stuff not for his benefit generally, it's for my benefit. I want to give you an example of this where I didn't do this. I had, last weekend, I got an infection under my nail. And <laughs> it was really sore. The whole thing of, we are a whole body, and if one part, the Bible actually speaks about this, if one small part gets sore, it affects the whole body. I experienced it last weekend. I was like, this is ridiculous. I have, it's only sore under my, the nail of my thumb. I've got an infection under there. It became so inflamed. It was all red and swollen as much as it can get swollen from a nail and under it, etc. It was really painful. Such that Abigail was having a matric dance last Saturday. I was in attendance as mom. And I had to, on a Saturday, go and find a doctor somehow to go and get an antibiotic. It was incredibly um, uh, in the way. It was not convenient at all to be having to go and sort this out. Now, why am I telling you about my infected thumb? now in the middle of heart connection and obeying the Holy Spirit. Because a couple of months ago, I noticed some black stuff under my nail. And I was looking at it, and I was like, what is this? I'm wondering. And it would sometimes be a little bit sore. And I distinctly felt like the Lord prompted me to soak my nail in some disinfectant stuff, my thumb, in some disinfectant stuff over, a few, uh, over some periods. Because God cares about me. And you're like, how did you do it? I just, I talk to the Lord quite often. But did I listen to him? No. I did not listen to him. I was like, oh, man, that's a pain. And I think I maybe did it once, but not for long. And the dirt stayed there, and it continued, and etc. And um, and I was, I was just like, Ach, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think I wished I'd listened to the Holy Spirit <laughs> last Sunday? I learned because Holy Spirit knew what was going to happen if I didn't. 
and he knew where it would be fall and that I'm going to have a difficult weekend because he cares about me. But he didn't come and yellow truck, he didn't come and bash me over the head. Why didn't you do this, you silly girl, etc.? He's like, well, if you don't want to listen, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry you're going to experience. And that's a silly example. But if you can expand it into your whole life, listen to the Lord. Listen to what he says when he says, go and give your friend that encouragement. Go and sit on your son's bed as he's going to sleep and listen to him. Don't bother him with loads of questions when he's getting to be a teen. Is that right, Akona? Don't ask and ask and ask because they just get irritated. You reduce your heart connection when you do that. But just be present. Be with them. Show love. Consider, because I love my son. I want heart connection with him. Another example is him with his dog. He wants the dog to love him. So he pulls him and he pulls and he holds him and he makes and, and his dog gets irritated with him. And then he reduces heart connection with his dog because next time the dog's a little bit more nervous to come to him because Jono is trying to force him to do what he wants him to do. Guys, I'm using very simple examples, but I'm trusting, can you apply them to your deeper examples? Apply them to your deeper relationships. Pursue the goal of connection. Agape, or unconditional love, says, no matter what you do, no matter what you do, I am going to pursue the goal of connection with you. Anxiety will arise when there are personal differences in the relationship, and fear will tempt you to run away from one another. However, in committing to love unconditionally, you commit to keep moving toward one another, even when you are scared. So, moving toward one another, even when you are scared. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 says here, For God has not given us a spirit of fear or timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. When we are feeling afraid, when there is fear, as I said earlier, it leads us to control and seeking to control situations and people. But God has said that he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love. When with him, he has given us the means, because he loves us with an agape love, because he has loved us, he gives us the power to operate with, in love and to move towards the person, to to say, I'm going to keep my love on. I'm going to, even when my child pulls back or they do stuff that hurts the relationship, that, that is communicating, um, I, I, I don't want to spend time with you right now. I can't control them, but I can control me, my heart attitude. Well then, very well then, I'm not going to spend time with you either. I can have that attitude. What's that going to do for our connection? It's going to go even further away. I can control myself and my feelings and my emotions. I just want to give you um, the self-control is at the core of being a powerful person. When we are powerful, we can control ourselves. Self-control means that you can tell yourself what to do and you can make yourself do it. You know where you say, I can't, your children, I cannot. 
I can't. Well, they can if they choose to. I can if I want to. The only person you can control on a good day is yourself. And responding in love means that you cannot control other people. If you're wanting to operate in love, you've got to say, I'm not willing to control other people. I'm not going to go there. And my time is up in terms of unpacking this further. But I want to encourage you to start looking at your relationships and looking at how are you behaving? How are you making choices in your friendships, in your relationships with your family, in your relationships with your work colleagues, etc.? How much are you choosing to keep heart connection, to pursue the goal of staying connected with them? And thinking, I am a Christian, if you are. I'm a Christian. I have the means to love. I love you. I'm loving you. But maybe you need to ask yourself, actually, am I being, am I operating in love? Uh, the other day, a few days ago, I, I, I suddenly stopped myself as I was meditating on this and thinking this, and thinking, how much am I operating in love? Am I actually loving the way, am I showing love? Am I loving my husband in the way, through the way that I'm relating to him? Or am I operating out of selfishness and self-preservation? Because he was asking me to do stuff and, and it wasn't, it was valid, but my way of responding to him, was I, uh, and, and these were the questions I was like, afterwards, not in the moment, afterwards, was, was I building heart connection with him there? Was I considering of highest value that I want to have heart connection with him? Or was I, trying to control him by shouting or by giving, ex you know, giving excuses. Excuses are not controlling them so much, but it's, it's pulling, it's making my heart connection uh, move further away. But blaming him, whatever, pointing, trying to control his side of the connection. Whereas that's not my business, that's his business. He's got to consider that. But how, am, how was I relating? And I asked myself, do I love him? Of course I love him. Of course I love him. But is it theory? Or am I acting, am I acting love? Am I operating out of love? Am I, fee, am I helping for heart connection so that that feeling of love, that um, the, it's impacting my emotions. Or is it just head? Of course I love him. I do. And I do feel love for him. But I'm, I, need to, I need to be looking at myself. Am I pursuing that connection with him? Am I building that connection with him? Am I preferring to do stuff or to respond in ways that are going to help him to feel connected to me more? and strengthen that heart connection. And this self-control that I can tell myself what to do. And parents, this is the biggest thing. The only person you can control on a good day is yourself. <laughs> it is. To control yourself. But then we presume that we should be trying or needing to control the other person, our pupils in our school, hey Zanele, control them. But what must I do? Well, we need to engage one another and communicate with one another well enough 
and empower them to be able to control themselves. So empower them, give them the tools, give them the language to be able to speak, Give them the safe space so that they can communicate, so that they can feel safe, so they can control their side of the relationship. So responding in love. Let us respond in love. So I want to just encourage you. Let's commit to partnering and pursuing the goal of connection. I want to invite you to commit to controlling yourself and commit to moving together, moving towards one another in love and not away from one another because of fear. Because fear is a terrible taskmaster. Fear uh, it comes from the enemy, whereas love comes from God. And 1 John 4 verse 18 says, there's no fear in love. Because love, fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. God has given us his love so that we can love one another and so that we can drive out fear, relate to one another, communicate in such a way so that we can be connecting and relating to one another well and not making one another feel afraid. And so... I really trust that, that you feel that there's an, an empowering for you to just examine your relationships as we've walked through this. And I want to invite us now just to pray as we close and to, to pray for God to, um, to just come and to heal your heart and, and I was like, do we pray for relationships? But I think, let's just pray for our hearts right now. So if you, uh, if you would like to, just as an act of, of inviting God's love and surrendering to him, to just hold out your hand, hands. Just... Father God, I pray right now for each person here, each person listening that has been listening and receiving um, these words right now. Lord, we pray for our hearts. We pray that we would receive your love that you have given us, that we would become so conscious of and Know that it's such a truth that you love us as we are, that your love makes us safe so we can be at peace in ourselves. And because we are at peace in ourselves, we, we can be a safe place for other because, others because we are at peace with who we are. And so, Father God, we bring our hearts to you today. We ask you to forgive us. Please forgive me. Maybe you can make this your own prayer. Please forgive me. Where I have tried to control other people. Please help me, Lord, to control myself. You say that you have given us not given us a spirit of fear, but a power to be able to control myself and to operate in love and to be powerful. That means to be able to speak. I am powerful to communicate what I need to communicate. I am able to make right choices so that I can pursue the goal of connection. So please help us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. We hope you've enjoyed this message. 
For more information, please visit our website at www.hispeoplepmb.co.za and for more of our messages, visit our YouTube and SoundCloud channels as well as other podcast platforms. If you would like to contact us, please email us at hispeoplepmb at gmail.com or send a message to 61 452-0877. To join us for in-person services, visit us at 154 Burkett Road, Scottsville, Peter Maritzburg. We hope to see you soon. God bless you.